From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Thursday, February 16th, 2023. Israeli Influence Group Exposed. The Guardian published a report looking at an Israeli hacking group known as Team George, which purports to have manipulated over 30 elections over the last two decades. The unit is apparently run by Tal Hanan, a former Israeli special forces operative who operated a private service to influence elections across Africa, South and Central America, the U.S. and Europe. Part of his operation used a software suite called Advanced Impact Media Solutions, which controlled thousands of fake social media profiles across different platforms. The group's tactics also included planting material for news outlets to cover and hacking into Gmail and Telegram accounts. A group of journalists recorded meetings with Hanan to get information on the group, posing as potential clients. Another day, another record DDoS. Cloudflare reports it saw a massive DDoS attack over the weekend, achieving 71 million requests per second at its peak. This saw 54% more requests than previous record DDoS Google recorded back in June. The attack originated from over 30,000 IP addresses and came as part of a flood of DDoS attempts over the weekend, targeting a variety of organizations. This marks a continued trend for DDoS attacks coming from cloud providers. Traditionally, these attacks came from residential ISPs using botnet-infected machines. According to Cloudflare, the number of HTTP-based DDoS attacks increased 79% on the year in Q4. Cut cables lead to Lufthansa outage. The German airline Lufthansa grounded all flights early on February 15th after damage to four Deutsche Telekom fiber broadband cables at a rail location in northern Frankfurt disrupted its IT operations at its global flight operations center. Some flights resumed later in the day, but it didn't expect flights in Frankfurt to resume until early evening. The broadband cables were damaged by concrete drills working in the area. As of this recording, Deutsche Telekom repaired two of the cables, but couldn't comment when all would be fixed. Anonymous Sudan ruins Sweden's Valentine's Day. A cyber attack on Scandinavian Airlines knocked its website offline and caused its mobile app to leak user data. Some customers attempting to log into the SAS app saw other customers' account information, including contact info and itineraries, but this didn't include passport information. Sweden's national public broadcaster, SVT, as well as some universities, telcos, and private companies also reported cyber attacks. The group Anonymous Sudan took credit for the attacks. This supposedly occurred in response to the burning of a Quran during a January protest in Stockholm. The Russian-backed UserSec group said on Telegram it assisted Anonymous Sudan in the airline attack. And now a word from our sponsor, us. Yes, the CISO series. Every week, one of the stories from cybersecurity headlines comes up in our team meetings, said Brett Conlon, the CISO for American Century Investments, who admits he starts his day with this very show. And did you know that cybersecurity headlines has longevity? Yeah, it's a daily news show, but we see significant downloads for four months after episodes air. That means your ad campaign will continue to live long after the premiere airing. To learn more about pricing and audience, email us at info at CISOseries.com. ASML employee stole chip data. In the world of chip making, the Dutch firm ASML remains a key supplier, providing lithography equipment required for cutting-edge chip processes. The company disclosed that a China-based employee stole confidential information. Bloomberg sources say the theft included technical information, but not hardware, nor their specifics, although ASML said the theft wasn't material to its business. It informed the Dutch trade ministry as this could constitute a violation of export controls. Last year, it also accused a China-based firm of stealing trade secrets. Japan and the Netherlands recently agreed to further technology exports on chipmaking equipment to China. The city of Oakland declares state of emergency after ransomware. The Californian city first experienced a ransomware attack on February 8th. In the update announcing the state of emergency, the city said it continues to struggle with the fallout, with several non-emergency systems, including phone lines within the city of Oakland, impacted or offline. The state of emergency will allow officials to speed obtaining equipment, deploying personnel, and issuing orders to help bring services back online. No word on if the attacks obtained any data or what ransom they demanded. Copilot stops narking on secrets. GitHub updated its Copilot AI powered code suggestion system to now filter out auto completing secrets like keys, credentials, and passwords. Its training set includes these on novel strings. 
GitHub says these suggestions were already entirely fictitious, but now it will just block them entirely. The update will also block Copilot from suggesting other security faux pas, like hard-coded credentials, path injections, or SQL injections. The tool also added a new fill-in-the-middle mode, which allows developers to leave a gap for the AI to fill using a library of known code suffixes. El Salvador plans Bitcoin Embassy. The country's ambassador to the U.S. said it plans to open a Bitcoin embassy in Texas, claiming it could help expansion of commercial and economic exchange projects. It began talks with Texas's Deputy Secretary of State Joe Esparza about the project. This isn't the first time El Salvador planned a foreign location to advocate for the cryptocurrency. It also signed a memorandum of understanding with the Swiss city Lugano last year to create a Bitcoin office. In June 2021, El Salvador became the first country to recognize Bitcoin as legal tender. As of March 2022, a study found that only 14% of businesses completed at least one transaction in Bitcoin in the country. When you think about building a plan and budget for your security program, do you lead with risk, maturity, or something else? That's the question we'll be digging into on this week's episode of Defense in Depth. We just posted it, so look for What Leads a Security Program, Risk or Maturity in your podcast app of choice, or just head on over to CISOseries.com. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.